this episode, we are visiting Cleveland, Ohio, the Forest City, and Cuyahoga Valley National Park. I'm riding, 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 riding with my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. Here we are, we made it to Streetsboro, KOA. Streetsboro, Cleveland, KOA. And this is gonna be like in the top five best campsites we've ever had. We have a grill, we have this table, like not, not, not like a picnic table, like a, very nice. And then we have these three, these three chairs overlooking this lake. I mean, it's, this is really cool. And um, can't wait to enjoy it more with you guys. But now we have a date in Cleveland and we're late. So let's do it. There it is. Cleveland, another one of those great American cities we have never visited. It is a pretty good looking skyline. By the way, we are meeting up with longtime supporter Tyrone and Karen, and we're going to do it at historic Great Lakes Brewing Company, Cleveland's first microbrewery, located in a very historic building. Well, if you haven't met him, this is Tyrone. Thank you, Tyrone, for inviting us to, to Cleveland here, and we're getting a flight, and he's getting a... Elliot Ness. Elliot Ness. And we are at Great Lakes Brewing Company, which is famous for Elliot Ness history, and other things that I'll voice over uh, later because I don't remember now. Tyrone got us a sausage sampler and some pretzels. Let's dig in. Well, apparently this, this used to be like a feed store and that's the scale from, from those times. And this is when they used to brew the beer. Now they have a much larger facility across the street. But, uh, yeah, this was the original from 1988. That's when they started. And I forgot the story about the booth, but it's really cool. Tie run to the rescue. That's where they used to pay for the for the feed that they would weigh on that scale. Okay, let's go see uh, the rest of the, the brewery. And this is the historic Tiger Mahogany Bar from the 1860s. And Tyrone is showing us the bullet holes, accredited to none other than Elliot Ness, who apparently frequented the tavern. Like in the winter, we'll just throw yeah. some logs on the fireplace, and it, unless it's like super duper cold, it's warm enough in here. That was a lot of fun. And that's where they make the beer these days, since they outgrew their main building. Now let's walk around a little bit. And this is the West Side Market. We might visit tomorrow. Let's explore a little bit, but the big exploration will actually happen tomorrow. The skyline is kind of reminiscent of a smaller Chicago one. There's Cleveland Venus, based on the Venus de Milo. Yep, definitely a mini Chicago. And there are going to be obvious flagrant omissions in our visit here. We're not gonna do USS Cod, because it's not here at the time of our visit, August 2021. And even more shocking, we are not going to do the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, also known as Rock Hall. And I know, we should, but we're just not in the museum mood. I'm sure it is spectacular, but not this time around. And coming up here, it's what at one point was the largest outdoor chandelier in the world, the GE Chandelier, here on Playhouse Square. 
It is magnificent, isn't it? That's Willard Park and its famous rubber stamp sculpture. And Cleveland Public Square with the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. All right, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna return tomorrow, find parking, and explore all this by foot. One more thing we can do today, and it is totally a thing, is pass by the Christmas Story House. And this is not it. This is just a parking lot. I must confess I have never actually watched the movie, but this is it. It was purchased in 2004 and restored to look exactly like in the movie, even with the famous leg lamp by the window. It is actually a very pretty neighborhood. <sighs> it never fails. <laughs> what a wonderful evening. Uh, you know, adult beverage, by the campfire. Well, yeah, we didn't buy any firewood, but it's, it's magical out here. This is, this is definitely one of the best campsites we've ever had. Good morning. Well, it was too good to be true, right? Uh, power went out this morning and uh, we've been without power for like four hours. Luckily, it's not too hot, but eventually I'm gonna have to, you know, turn on the AC. Uh, we have like two and a half, three hours maybe of AC power if we turn it more to turn it on. And um, and then, you know, if, if we deplete the battery, I'm gonna start making noise, you know, to deploy the generator. Let me let me show you this lake here. This 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 is a beautiful campground here in Streetsboro, Streetsboro KOA near Cleveland. But yeah, I'm glad I'm glad I have that big battery on the on, on Minitini Three over there because that way you know we can run. Uh, we we've been running both computers for for all morning really. It's gonna be more. It's, it's turning out to be mostly a work day today and. Uh, and we, we've made it then, I mean, we're down to like 80%, which is really good. All right, back to work. Okay, enough working. Let's go into Cleveland again. Let me tell you, it is a good 45 minutes from the campground to downtown, so it is not exactly close. So this daily commute is going to get old soon. Let's stop by the Ohio City neighborhood first because I want to go into the West Side Market. It was closed by the time we got here yesterday. Gonna park at the same lot we parked yesterday. Guess what, we're back. But we're not going to Great Lakes today. Great Lakes is closed. We're gonna go to the market, but first let's see something here that seems to be interesting. I think they went out of business. This used to be uh, called Crap Bistro and Bar, and it's a historic building. Yeah, the building used to be a bank, and this is disappointing. This was on my list of places for whining and dining. Actually, the website says temporarily closed, so there is hope. That must have been nice when it was open. Nice ceiling, too. All right, let's check out West Side Market and look at this grand old building. Let's go in through here and uh, wow, look at that. That's impressive. All kinds of different stalls selling all kinds of goods. But I was also expecting what I've seen at similar markets at places ranging from Helsinki to Milwaukee. I was expecting a place to eat with tables or at least bar stools. Oh yeah, very cool, kind of reminds me of that market we went to in, in Helsinki, in Finland, or, or the one in Milwaukee too, but uh, yeah, very nice. I think I'm gonna have an espresso. Bummer, the espresso machine is down, so no espresso for me. Now, I don't know if uh, 
there's anything else in this area we want to check out so let's go back through the same street that we came yesterday which is uh, where where the brewery where uh, great lakes is and um, and we will explore another area of the city this one looks like the one in charleston or like the one in new orleans you know that long long french market it kind of looks like it what we really want to do is get something to eat and at least great lakes is closed today let's just hope it's not a trend well the market was a little bit of a fail not not because um <laughs> excuse me it reminds me of those large city markets and uh, if you are shopping for like beef or sausages or all kinds of stuff um It'd be a good place to, to visit but I, I was hoping more like you know having like little restaurants or you know like like you see in other uh, uh, of these uh, types of markets there was a restaurant there but it, it didn't look very appealing so now we're gonna continue I mean it was it was nice to see it's a historic uh, market impressive building We're gonna stop by North High Brewing Company because that's where we're doing the, the meetup tomorrow. So I wanna do it just to see it. Yes, the Greater Cleveland Meetup is happening, or happened, right here at the North High location in Ohio City. Parking is extremely limited, but I'm sure we'll make it work. Ohio City here, by the way, one of the oldest neighborhoods in Cleveland and nowadays has the largest concentration of craft breweries in the city. Lots of gentrification and high-rise condos. And there, public parking, that's where it's going to be. Let's go back to downtown and find parking this time. to park where to park actually for a big city there's not a whole lot of traffic here Alright, let's park right here. It is outrageously expensive, but I'm tired of looking and we can't find anything else. That's where we parked. 200 public square. And now we're going to eat something somewhere. All of a sudden, very quiet here. Yes definitely not very lively and this is the thing today's monday and everything is closed bad planning for sure on our part but okay another epic fail uh, our timing impeccable as ever yeah. and i want to say if you want to gonna come to cleveland do not come on a monday because all the restaurants are closed <laughs> we'll find somewhere to eat right <laughs> There's always a McDonald's. Here's a statue of Moses Cleveland, founder of the city. He came here in 1796 to find a suitable location with the Cuyahoga River to the west and Lake Erie to the north. There's an observation deck here on Tower City Center. Again, only open on weekends. Tower City Center here, that was the, the tallest skyscraper outside of New York. And here's, once again, the Soldiers and Sailors Monument. Cleveland can definitely be one of those noisy, intimidating cities. Let's continue roaming on Euclid Avenue. We've heard about this place called the Arcade.
This is a historic shopping center dating back to 1890. Pretty opulent, if you ask me, and I'm sure a welcome respite during the cold winters. It is a little reminiscent of the covered passages of Paris. Apparently, very few things are open <laughs> on a Monday and Tuesday in Cleveland. It's a beautiful building, historic. It's a hotel too, but everything seems, seems to be closed. There's no one here. A historical marker for the, for the arcade. There's another arcade here. This one is much smaller in scale, but same concept with the glass roof. Next, Heinen's Grocery Store, located in the historic Cleveland Trust Building, which is in a much smaller scale, kind of reminiscent of Galerie Lafayette in Paris. It once housed the vaults that contained a lot of the wealth of the Carnegies and the Rockefellers. This set of murals at the top represents the development of civilization in America. And we still haven't had lunch today, and I guess we could have gotten something to go at Heinen's, but I guess we kind of want to sit down someplace with something to drink. This area here is called the Flats, and there are several options. Of course, this is probably the worst choice from a culinary standpoint, but it's kind of a tradition for us to visit a brewery when available, and Collision Bend is right here. Nice views of the river out here, but it is just too hot this afternoon to be sitting in the sun, so we're going back inside. <laughs> 420 fries and cheeseburger pizza. Hmm. Yeah, not exactly gourmet, but filling. That, by the way, part of the historic Detroit Superior Bridge. Here's the point where the Cuyahoga River meets Lake Erie. Check it out. They have an RV here in front of this place. The flats here, probably my favorite part of Cleveland so far. Our next point of interest is Edgewater Park, from where you can see a great view of the city. And they even have a Cleveland sign for you to take a picture with. There's a group of people here doing yoga, but don't mind me. I just want to take a picture of the city with the sign here. And that would be Edgewater Beach, Cleveland's great urban beach. And uh, I think this is what we're gonna call it today. Well, this is that iconic spot from where you can see the whole city back there and the Cleveland sign here. So, um, very cool, and there's a very nice beach back there. I think this is a fitting end to our day here in Cleveland. Cool, a family photo shoot.
And with that, we say goodbye for now to another great American city. We'll return one of these days. Well, actually, we're coming back tomorrow night for the great Cleveland meetup. But tomorrow during the day, we're going to explore nearby Cuyahoga National Park. So yeah, this is it for now, as far as exploration of the city goes. Well, good morning. It rained all morning, but uh, it is now almost 10 a.m. and it stopped raining. It's shaping to be a pretty beautiful day and we're going to Cuyahoga National Park. That's the plan, anyways. And uh, yeah, this campground very nice, but it floods a little bit. I mean, to be to be fair, it rained a lot, but still, it's about 20 minutes to the visitor center, and then we're gonna see some waterfalls, maybe do a hiking trail. I did remember to bring my hiking shoes, by the way. I did remember. Cuyahoga Valley is the only national park in the Buckeye State and it preserves and reclaims the rural landscape along the Cuyahoga River between Akron and Cleveland. Well, here we are, Cuyahoga Valley National Park and now we're going to the, into the visitor center and see what's going on. And uh, yeah, we wanted to take the train but maybe next time. Right, we're gonna begin with Brandywine Falls, which seems to be like the main attraction here that is open. There are other things that are closed uh, this week. By the way, went to the visitor center, super as they usually are, super helpful. And um, and I did remember to bring my hiking shoes. Did I say that already? Yeah, I'm getting up there in age, so I tend to repeat myself. <laughs> But yeah, I asked her, you know, what, what could we do, uh, and uh, you know, if, if we only have like two or three hours in the park. So she she recommended Brandywine Falls, and there's like a loop a boardwalk. There's a boardwalk and then a loop trail, and there's another trail called the Ledges. We may or may not do the whole Ledges. We'll see. Let's do it. The unique aspect about the park is the fact that it is surrounded and intertwined with all these residential areas being adjacent to these two large urban areas. There we go. We're gonna go to the falls first and then I got that uh, All Trails app, which has been very helpful lately. And uh, we're gonna use it to, to follow the next trail. I don't know if you can see him, but that's a lot of bees. Look at all these rock formations, apparently bedrock outcroppings. And we have reached the falls. That is magnificent. The only bad part, now we, now we have to go back up.
Let's continue. Here's another cool vantage point from behind the falls. Yeah, that was the inn at Brandywine Falls. Open year round, scan code to see rooms and rates. Modern. This is the Brandywine Gorge Loop about a mile and a half or so, and we're going to be able to enjoy the views of the creek from several spots. And here's the first access point. Let's check it out. Gorgeous spot here on the on the trail. And we're gonna continue. We're going counterclockwise on the trail. Let me show you. Let me show you real quick here on the All Trails app. Here's where we are, what we're doing. We're going counterclockwise. And uh, and we're almost at the halfway point. We've done exactly one mile. I was, I was afraid we were going to have to like ford the river, but they do have a bridge. Let me tell you, so far, pleasantly surprised by Cuyahoga Valley National Park here. Okay, according to this, 1.7 miles, it took us an hour, 11 minutes. We did some research, in other words, a Google search, and this place here seems to be a local favorite. Those Dinner Bucket, established in 1977. If it's been here that long, it must be pretty good, huh? One thing for sure, everybody seemed to know each other. Yep, established 1977. That is as mom and pop as it gets. That was really good, actually. <laughs> Now we're going back to the park to do yet another trail. This one we've heard is not to be missed. It is called the Ledges Trail. Well, we need to work off the, the calories from that uh, macaroni salad. So we're going to do a little bit of this uh, Ledges Trail. Dark forest. Yeah, it's pretty dark out here. The cloudiness combined with the dense vegetation. Stay back from the edge. That's why I have a long selfie stick. That's the cave. There's the cave that is closed.
are very nice. I think we're approaching that famous overlook. I suppose it's that over there. Well, I guess this is the overlook. Well, this is the overlook, perhaps a little anticlimactic if you ask me, but it was one of those where the, the journey was probably better than the destination. So now we're gonna find the shortcut back to the, to the parking lot. <laughs> well, we're gonna see if we can take a shortcut back to the parking lot. I mean, for all we know, we missed the best part of the trail, but we're tired, we have to get back. Uh, because actually tonight is the is the big uh, Cleveland meetup. As we head back to Cleveland one last time, there's one more thing we want to see, and that is Lakeview Cemetery and the James Garfield Monument. The cemetery is privately owned and famous for its many lavish monuments and mausoleums and Elliotness. Well, here's Garfield, but I don't see anywhere to park. Hmm, maybe here. Well, the Garfield monument is closed. It only opens Thursday through Sunday, our timing impeccable as ever. But uh, let's just see what we can see. And uh, it's quite impressive. I've heard that from the balcony you get to see some of the best views of Cleveland. And what I really wanted to do was go up to that balcony up there because supposedly there's a great view of, of Cleveland from up there. But let's see how high we can go. It's a beautiful, beautiful monument. Yeah, the moral of the story here of this whole few days we've spent in Cleveland come late in the week and during the weekend. Uh, early in the week, it's... We, we still had a great time. It's just um, a lot of things are closed. We just can't get high enough to see the view. The balcony itself is closed. Mm. Bummer. The monument is impressive and, uh, in general, it is a beautiful necropolis. Well, next we're gonna see J.D. Rockefeller, which has like a huge obelisk. Now we're gonna go see Elliot Ness, and I think that's it. There's the chapel, naturally also closed on Tuesday. There he is, ironically with two beer bottles by the headstone. Elliot Ness. That's it for the cemetery. Now let's go have a beer or two with the fellow Buckeye Pelican heads. Yep, this is the Cleveland meetup, everybody. If you count how many people came, I have no idea, but it's, it's, been, a lot, it's been a lot of fun. I'd say the meetup was a success. Thank you all for coming. And now for real. We're going to say goodbye to Cleveland, for now. Tomorrow the road will take us farther east, to Erie, Pennsylvania. But more about that on the next episode. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and see you on the road. Right.
riding in my RV Wherever I want to be And guys I'm free in my RV Yeah, I'm riding Riding, riding I'm riding in my RV My RV Wherever I want to be Cause I'm free in my RV